Hey everyone, welcome to Home on the Rangers. I'm your host, Jared Sandler, part of the Rangers radio broadcast team on 105.3 The Fan and the Rangers radio network. We're going to be live here on Facebook throughout the season, taking you behind the scenes into Rangers baseball. Coming up in a few minutes, we're going to be joined by Delino DeShields, and we want you to have a chance to ask Delino some of your questions, so be sure to send them in to the comments section below. Evan Grant's going to join us in a second, but before, we got some Rangers trivia for you. Right now we're joined by the lead Rangers beat writer for the Dallas Morning News and on the side he's a bit of a TV star, Evan Grant. Evan, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on your show, Jerry. <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right, so a few weeks into the season, one of the big talking points has been the play of Joey Gallo. He's been productive at the plate, in the field, and even on the bases. What stood out to you most about what Joey's done so far? I think we tend to get hung up in, and, I, and particularly fans love the idea that he's hit a 462-foot home run, that he nearly hit a popcorn cart, uh, that he's hit the two hardest hit home runs in Major League Baseball this year. But I'm looking at the overall picture, and I see a guy who has gone out there with an approach on first pitches. If he gets a fastball first pitch, he's looking to attack it. He's hit five home runs on 0-0 or 1-0 pitches. That's a really good sign that he's, that he's able to be aggressive early in a count. Second part, he's got three hits now after getting down 0-2. So to me, what that tells me, Here's a situation where a guy who had some troubles before when he got down in the count now is more comfortable being in two strike counts, more adept at executing a plan. I also think you have to look at the defense. Uh, the play he made on Sunday, the diving catch, you know, Jeff Bannister said to both of us the other day, yesterday uh, when we were talking about that, how's his range at third base? And, and Banny's quote was, I think his range is helped by his range because at 6'5", He's got natural range and doesn't have to move as far sometimes to be able to make a, a grab with those long arms. I thought it was a fantastic play, and I think he's really been well above average at third base all season. Now tonight the Rangers try and get their first win of the season against the Twins, even up this three-game series. Andrew Kashner gets the start. It will be his third start. Didn't start the season, a part of the rotation, coming back from injury. Two starts. What have you seen from him? Well, what I, I've seen from him is that I think the velocity is there, and that would, and, and he's he's maintained that velocity throughout the game. I think that was my biggest concern, given the the short spring training that he had, the the lack of a, of a full rehab assignment. I wondered how quickly that would diminish. First game in Seattle, fifth inning, he's still hitting 93 to 94. When he needed to reach back, he had a couple of pitches at 95. I think he's executed his pitch as well. I think he's really taken to the Rangers' game plan of being able to throw inside to try and buy some real estate outside. Uh, he has looked really good. Pitched six scoreless innings the other night here, and I think that it's important for him as a very proud Texan, and we've seen him strutting around the clubhouse with his Willie Nelson shirt, his Willie <laughs> Nelson headband, that he wants to win here in Texas, and uh, I look for him to, to go out there and continue to use that as something of a extra motivation. Carlos Gomez at the top of the order has reached base 12 of the last 13 games, hits in five straight. He got off to a bit of a slow start. Seems like things are starting to turn around for him. How important is he to getting this Rangers lineup back to achieving what I think we all believe they're capable of achieving? Well, I, you know, I think that the, the Rangers lineup overall has, has continued to try and find its water, its, its water level as we, go, as we go forward. Part of that, I think, is due to the absence of Adrian Beltre. As well as Joey's played, you still would love to have Adrian Beltre in the middle of that lineup. That would, that would lengthen out the lineup. The second part of it is Carlos Gomez has to get on base a little bit more. He has done that the last five games. He's got a five-game hitting streak going into tonight, had a pair of hits last night. He's had a very good home stand. And the other thing for me is even though the, the, the offensive production has been a little bit spotty, he's won a couple of games or contributed to a win very single-handedly in a couple of specific games. So, you know, Carlos is a very high energy player. He's a guy that's going to make some great, great plays and do some amazing things. And then there's going to be some days when it's not so good. He is in a, he's on a roll right now. Sin Chu Chu behind him has started to take a lot more walks. You know, as Jeff Bannister said in spring training, Gomez is an igniter, Chu is a connector. When you do all that, the middle of the lineup gets its, its, itself together and you're going to have a very potent offense. Evan, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. That it, Jerry? That's it.
Oh, man, I was just starting to get warmed up. <laughs> All right, well, coming up, we're going to hear from Delino De Shields. But first, there are always some great, exciting new food items here at Globe Life Park. Let's take a look at the farm. Hello, guys. My name is Chris Vasquez, executive chef at the ballpark. Today, we're going to make the farm. It is available, Rebecca Creek Saloon. First, we're going to get a nice soft bread, lettuce, a few slices of tomato. So for the beef part, we're going to get the beef patty. From the chicken, we're going to get the fried chicken. Of course, we have to have bacon, and of course, we have to have some cheese. We're going to give it some spiciness on it, and we're just going to finish it up with the rest of the bread. A wonderful dish. Enjoy. Welcome back to Home on the Rangers. I'm Jared Sandler right now, joined by outfielder Delino DeShields. And Delino, we got a lot of questions from the fans, but before we get to those, i got to ask you, each of the last two games, I've seen you wearing different cartoon-themed cleats during batting practice. Yesterday was Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Two games ago was Boondocks. What can you tell us about this cartoon cleat collection you have? Well, uh, it all kind of started. One of my buddies from New York, he's, a, he's an artist. Um, he's been really involved in the NFL. Wanted to kind of, I don't know, get his get his foot get his feet wet in uh, in baseball and different sports. He reached out to me, and uh, you know, I had some spare cleats around the house, and I sent him some, and uh, they do good work. Um, and I just want to keep the environment fun and and loose and light. Uh, so that's what it's really all about. Um, nothing really specific. Those are just two of like my favorite cartoons growing up. Do you have more to the collection, or are those the only two right now? Yeah, there should be some more coming. Okay, so, uh, all right. I might surprise some people. So all right, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to keep our eyes out during yeah, batting practice. Sure. All right, we got a question from Justin, and he wants to know, probably a question we all want to know, exactly how fast are you? I mean, it depends <laughs> on what we're talking about. All right, let's go with, uh, are you faster than a cheetah? <sighs> well, I mean, a cheetah <laughs> can get up to about 60 miles per hour, so... I don't know if I'm as fast as that, but uh, a third of that, yeah, for sure. Have you? Do you know what your top speed? Have you ever been measured like what your your top speed uh, miles per hour wise is? I know they had like the stat cast stuff, and I really don't pay too much attention to that. Um, but I think the fastest was 23. 23 20, miles an hour? Yeah, we're 22 point like eight or something. I don't. That's speeding in some there. school zones, right? Yeah. So we have the NFL draft coming up. We always talk about 40 times. In high school, you were a football player, could have played football in college. I imagine you ran the 40. What was your fastest 40 time? Fastest 40 time was a 4.27. Um, and in baseball, you run the 60. 60, yeah. And um, that was a 6.26. All right. Um, very close, but um, I tend to get off to slow starts. But I was telling a pro far and outfit we were talking about um, – because Trey Turner was on TV, he said, are you faster than him? I was like, well, I can tell you I've never lost a race. <laughs> um, no matter who it is against, I can start off slow, but I just I can't lose. I can't lose. And it, sometimes it just elevates me um, if I'm running against somebody. I haven't ran against anybody in a long time. But, uh, yeah, when I'm out there on the bases or whatever, it's just natural. Some days I feel slow. It looks fast. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that's pretty natural. Um, Rangers play the Nationals this year. Maybe we have to find yeah. a way to set that up before the game. Yeah, I was in the Futures game um, in 2013, and uh, they tried getting me and Billy to race against each other, and we, we kind of sat not to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a question from Aaron. She wants to know, Delino, what do you listen to before the game? Um, uh, well, we kind of listen to different things, whether – it's really who's controlling the DJ at the time. It could be Latin music, it could be, it could be country music, it could be uh, rap music or, or a mix between. Um, you know, our, our clubhouse is pretty chill with um, what music is played, we don't mind. Uh, guys got headphones, me specifically, I don't like really listening to music or getting hyped up or anything like that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill, like sometimes I'll uh, like meditate like find just a quiet place to just kind of gather my thoughts. Um, you know, when I was playing football, they used to always try to, you know, hype us up. But for me, it was like too much. You get on the field, you just forget like what you're doing. Yeah. Especially early in the game. So, uh, 
you know, from, from that experience playing football to now, I kind of treat it the same. Um, you know, I just want to be as relaxed and, and poised as possible when I'm going to the game. All right, we got a question here from Christy. She wants to know, what do you like to do outside of baseball? Um, well, to, to be honest, we really, during the season, we don't have that much time. <laughs> um, but I've played the guitar. Uh, that's something I kind of came up, came up on. Um, you know, just kind of get my mind away from baseball, play video games, PlayStation. Um, you know, I have a dog, Blue. He's a handful, but, uh, you know, he's a, he's a big fella. Love what type him. of dog? Uh, American Bully. Tri-colored American Bully. Uh, everybody's scared of him, but he's just <laughs> the biggest baby ever. Um, he's almost taller than I am, so. Yeah, maybe on his feet. Uh, <laughs> but he's pretty short and stout, kind of like how I was last year. Uh, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I don't really have that many ho hobbies. I just like just chilling, you know, because we're here every day. We work hard at what we do. So when I have time off, I usually just, whether it's an off day, um, I just don't want to do anything, to be honest. All right, Delano, we got one more question. This one comes from Ty. What's the biggest thing you worked on during the winter? Um, well, I mean, everybody knows about the, you know, the way that I lost. Uh, that was something that I wanted to, to get back to to kind of, you know, find my identity again and, you know, who I was, where I felt the best in my whole life and my career. Um, you know, so that was one of the things, my mentality, a lot of work, you know, after the year I had last year, um, wasn't, I wasn't happy with it, I wasn't content with it. Um, I know people probably didn't think or didn't know how, how I was going to recover. Um, but I think I showed up and, and surprised a lot of people, and you know, I was really happy with that. Delino, we appreciate it. Thank you. Rangers outfielder Delino DeShields. Now, earlier we gave you a trivia question. Time now for the answer. Jared Sandler back with you here on Home on the Rangers. I want to thank Evan Grant and Delino DeShields for taking the time to join us here on our first episode. And, of course, thanks to Chef Chris for the eats. Just a reminder, we're going to be live on Facebook throughout the entire season. And I encourage you to follow the Rangers on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube. Well, that's going to do it for us. Be sure to listen to Eric, Matt, and myself for Rangers Baseball on 105.3 The Fan and the Rangers Radio Network. Until next time, have a wonderful day.